Welcome back to my channel Techie Profit. I have come up with another awesome chart video. This time it is a bar chart that can depict sections in each bar. In this tutorial I will make a bar chart for money spends. This is going to be very exciting video because I will teach you two ways of animating this chart as you can see in the screen. With just one slight change in the thought process we can achieve two different charts. So be with me until the end of this video. And before starting, I would urge you to subscribe this channel and leave feedback in the comment section. You know, this is a free channel and I get more motivated when there is increase in subscribers count. We have to get 100k subs as soon as possible for this channel and it's not possible without you. So if this video helps you in any way, do subscribe so I can bring more such videos. We spend money for various stuffs. If we divide our expenses into categories, we can create many groups. For this video, I will take a fixed amount of categories, but with some tweaks, you can easily make chart for generic list of categories as well. Most of the times you have fixed amount of categories beforehand. And if a particular category doesn't have any spend, the category won't be visible. I have some code already like dataset and a screen that will host the chart. The distributed graph screen will host the chart and it will also pass the dataset. Defining the dataset. Mostly you will get a list of transactions. Each transaction will belong to a category. You need to create a dataset that has sum of transactions grouped by category for each month. For simplicity, we are taking only four categories. So I have a data class with month name, food, Cat medical, travel and others as the four categories. And the data set will be list of data objects where one data object belongs to one month. How do you decide Y axis for the chart? You cannot have a fixed amount on your Y axis always. When you are plotting any type of numbered value that is bound to be not fixed. In our case as well, any amount can be spent for any category for any month. It is most important to know the max amount which can help in deciding the Y axis scale and max level. We will add the amount of categories for each month and put them in a list of amounts that is amounts. Eventually you will have sum of all the categories for a month. Out of this 5000 is the max amount. How do you find that in Dart? Use reduce. This operator iterates over first and next element for first cycle and we can compare A with B and return whichever is larger. In the next cycle, the bigger value from the last iteration is given to A and the next value is compared with it, like the third value in the list. This way you will get the max amount. Now you can define the gap between Y axis labels. How? Fix the number of labels you will have and divide max amount by that. Let's call it a scale. I won't be drawing Y axis in this video as it is not what is asked. Maybe later videos will have that. But nevertheless, we will need it to decide bar heights. Now how do you draw X axis? Y axis will always be tricky because it will require max value. But X axis is already in front of us the months. Month name will be labels and will be equally distant in horizontal direction. Create a list of labels first by running map on the dataset. I will consider the bar and the label as one column and we will have many such columns in horizontal fashion. So let's use row. We want to take this chart to take complete horizontal space. So set max size. They should equally apart. So use space between. In the children, we can use list or generate for horizontal labels. For each item, use column and put label in it. We will add bar later on. So let's see how does it look. Adding bars. Now that we have labels, we can add bars. To create one bar, we need multiple sticks. One stick will represent one category. Let's create a stick widget first. Each stick will have a color and a value. We will use container because we need height, width and rounded corners for the stick. Width can be hard coded 
and height will be the value. We will calculate the value just after this. So in the box direction, set the color and radius. Now come back to bars. We will add bars below the labels. There is a reason to do so, which you will see in this video. We will use sized box to give it fixed height of 300. Later, we will use this to calculate height of each stick. Now make bar widget a stateful one because we have to animate bars later on. Bar will have food height, medical height, travel height and other height as parameters. Use column and add these four sticks. Each stick will be dedicated to one category. When you want to make it generic, you can have list of categories. Give them different colors and give them the respective values. Now all the groundwork is done except for the stick height. How to calculate that? Let's see in this section. Height of a stick. For every bar, we need to provide height which will relate to the amount spent in that category. Just recall a simple formula from school days from ratio proportions. 300 is equivalent to max amount that we calculated before. And we need to find X, which is amount spent on one category. For example, we spent 500 on food and max amount is 5000. The X value will be 30 with respect to total height of 300 for the bar chart. Let's define a final variable to hold food height and put this formula. Repeat this for other categories. Now you have height of each category stick. Pass this to the bar and run the application. The labels are at the top. To bring them at bottom, we can set vertical direction as up. The bars go from bottom to top. So setting up is important. The similar concept is applied to stick in the bar. So add up direction there as well. Since this whole graph is not bounded with height, it took complete height available and when we made vertical direction up, it started drawing the drawing from bottom most possible point. So let's put it in a sized box. So now we have a nice bar chart and now comes the part where I will show you two ways of animating this chart. First way of animating the chart. Let's go to bar widget and add animations. Use single ticker provider state mixin. Declare controller and four animations of double type. In the init state function, initialize the controller. And now is the part that might be very new to you, so pay attention. Let's say out of four seconds of duration of the complete animation, we want that each stick takes one second each to animate to its complete height. So while initializing twin, we will add zero as begin and food height as end, then we will call animate. Here, we generally pass the controller, but when we want to animate values in a fraction of whole duration of animation, we have to use curved animation with interval. The curve here will be interval that start from zero value and ends at 0 0.25. What does this mean? So you know that controller will run for four seconds and its value will change from 0 0.1 to 1.0 60 times in a second. In this interval, we are telling that start the animation when controller's value is zero and reach the end of animation for food height when the controller value is 0 0.25. And when 0 0.25 value is reached, it will reach 0 0.25 in one second because whole duration is four seconds. I hope that you understood. But if not, you will definitely understand when we create three more twins for other categories. The second twin should start from 0 0.25 and end on 0 0.5. The third twin should start from 0 0.5 and end on 0 0.75. When animation has run for three seconds, we have drawn three categories. So for the last one, we have 0 0.75 as initial value and one as end value. Now, these are the twins. Lastly, run the animation controller in forward direction and also dispose it. So to use these values in our widget, we need to wrap column in animated builder and supply the controller as animation. In each stick,
pass the animation value instead of default value. And finally run the application. Does it look good? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's see other way of animating it. That will be even more impressive and robust. I am not going to change anything drastically. You will see that by just changing how twins are formed, we can see a very good animation. In previous part, all the intervals were equal, each having 0.25 of time to animate. As a result, categories with a 500 amount took the same time to animate as categories with a 3000 amount. What if we want to give intervals based on the amount itself? This way, every chart will animate differently with different speeds. Exciting? Let's do that. Calculate the total of all the categories first. We need this. First interval will start from 0 and it will end on widget dot food height by total. Now why total? The total will make sure that our value is always below 1. That is what controllers are supposed to not cross the value. For second twin, the end value of first twin will be the start value. The end value of second twin will be the sum of food height plus medical height because we want to build on from where food animation ended. Similarly, for third twin, the end value of second twin will be the start value. And the end value will be the sum of food, medical and travel. For last one, same thing. However, this interval's end value will be 1 because when we add all, it's equal to total. So now let's restart the application. Do you notice the difference? Okay, now I am changing the dataset to test this graph animation with different different values. Check the difference in this video for the first animation and for the second animation and feel free to use any one of them for your next animation. Well. This is it from this tutorial, I hope you really enjoyed it and will definitely try to create one yourself. I will also leave the link of the code in the description later once I push the code to GitHub. Thanks for sharing and see you in the next one.